It's about time. If you were to summarize the last four chapters of One Piece, you'd say, the world is gonna sink, and Joy Boy was a pirate. That's it. That's all you'd say. We got four chapters, and that's all we learned from this info dump. I'm kind of glad I don't do weekly chapter reviews anymore. Can you imagine me going, hey guys, welcome to One Piece chapter 1113, where we find out that the world is sinking. In other news, Venus Juro moved three centimeters to the left. I'd have shot somebody. This man Oda is slowly turning me into a psychopath. Who else but Gota? I mean, you know it's bad when Sawyer's seven mage of all people starts skipping chapter reviews because there's nothing going on. I mean, he even came out last week and said Oda is straight up wasting everyone's time. And he's not wrong. We expected a lore dump. However, we ended up getting more so of a lore recap with some additional info here and there. Most of the stuff that we've been learning is stuff that we've known for the longest of time. But if you're a casual reader or a casual watcher of One Piece, or you just straight up skip arcs all the time, then this may be fairly new information for you. Then good, you're satiated. I'm not. I'm suffering. You know the fandom's bored with the only interesting thing they can talk about is Sanji. Oh, don't get me started on the Sanji fans, man. You jokers hype up anything. Y'all have been going crazy for four weeks straight talking about how Sanji hit a Gorosei. If you haven't noticed, everyone and their mother has hit a Gorosei. Can't go five seconds without power scalers going crazy over somebody touching somebody else. I get it, I get agenda piece, but your agenda chest sucks. The past four weeks and the most interesting thing to talk about was Sanji doing zero damage to a Gorosei. whoop de doo I hope those crumbs taste good, Sanji fans, I really do. <laughs> But in this chapter, we finally got, well, more so of the same thing. <laughs> hey, look, you can't blame me. This man has been showing reactions after reactions after reactions. Oh, look at all this information that we're learning. Isn't this swell, pal? Shouldn't you be dead? Speaking of reactions and crumbs, Carrot! We got Carrot, that's dope, finally. Okay, now we have 110% confirmation that she really did go back and became the ruler of Zo, which I pretty much figured that she did after chapter 1060. I mean, at that point, it was just like, yeah, she probably went back. Now, as you all know, I've been a Carrot for an Akama guy for a long, long time. And well, I gave up a long time ago. And when I say a long time ago, I mean like over half a year ago. Back when the anime was still in Wano, near the end of it, they showed Carrot actually accepting the role. Now I get that this was anime only at the time, but that was the best thing we got because Achira Oda didn't actually want to write the dang story. I even made a post about this. I was like, hey, if Carrot accepts the role and gets a legitimate goodbye, I will just drop this entire agenda. That wasn't just something I said just to sound cute and likable. I meant what I said. All I was looking for was a straightforward answer. And the anime, not Oda, but the anime gave it to me. I mean, honestly, think about it. Carrot gets her butt whooped by Peril Sparrow, does nothing the entire arc of Wano, and then she comes back, hey, you're the ruler of Zone now. And then they end the scene on a cliffhanger. What? That didn't make any sense. She doesn't accept the role. She doesn't say, hey, I'll do it. No, nothing. You just, you just, you just move on. That's some um, pretty bad writing right there. Not gonna lie. And no, I'm not saying it's bad writing because Kara didn't join the crew. I know there's gonna be some clowns thing in that. No, I'm saying it's bad writing because it didn't make sense from a story perspective. And it also doesn't make sense from a character perspective. And it came out of nowhere. There's nothing that led up to it. And then you ended it on a cliffhanger. And the main reason why I stayed Kara for Nakama for so long is because I didn't think Oda would possibly write that bad. I was like, oh, well, he's, he's got something planned. Oda doesn't write that bad. That's not like him. He's better than that. Nah, this man was really out here just running like trash. I didn't know that. I, you know, and I know this is very insulting to a lot of Gota stands out there, but like, let's be transparent, the end of Wano wasn't really the best at all. When you have an anime studio come in to make an entire episode dedicated to just about everything you were lacking on, and then they still couldn't cover all of it, you have failed. My good sir, you failed. Wow, this is garbage. You actually like this? But I guess that's what happens when I give people the benefit of the doubt. Oh well, I digress. I take my L on the care for Nakama agenda. I was wrong. You can make fun of me. It's fine. It's all good. You can do that because I suck. Speaking of people that suck, we have Yamato. In this cover page story, she receives a devil fruit? Okay, you already know what I'm gonna think. Who the heck is getting that devil fruit? I can already see the Yamato fans cooking up some garbage, trying to find some way to fit this into their Yamato for Nakama agenda, as usual, because they can't do anything else in life, right? You should totally give up. Embrace defeat. Yamato will never join the Straw Hat crew, ever. Don't make me remind you what Oda did to you. Roll the clip. This was Oda's greatest troll. 
This man made the most fanfic character that appealed to many different people had her say, I'm joining the crew over and over again while simultaneously selling tons of merch and he keeps it going into the last chapter of the arc where Yamato says, nah, I'm good. This is the greatest troll in mangaka history. How did everyone miss this? This man trolled so well that people are still trying to figure out what happened a whole year later. Well, maybe Yoda just changed his mind at the last minute. Yeah, <laughs> no he didn't. This man did this on purpose. He planned on this. Remember during the middle of the arc, when Yamato was stated to be the guardian deity of Wano? I don't see how it's mentally, physically, emotionally, or spiritually possible for you guys to have ignored this line. I know what you're thinking. I can see the comments now. Kinda aren't you being hypocritical? You're a carrot for Nakama fan. Ha! Joke's on you. I gave up a long time ago. Checkmate. Boo this man! Y'all not about to have me sitting here looking like a VV fan? Waiting for a character to join the crew for 20 years. Y'all are just insane. The difference between you and I is that you don't give up. I do. We are not the same. Speaking of people that also suck, we have Stussy. Get it? You know, because she's a vampire, she sucks blood, and also she's the queen of the pleasure district, so she also... Anyways, we have Stussy. Stussy, in the past few chapters, has been incredibly intriguing, because not only does she have tick bitties, but she's also got a heart. Oh, how sweet. Take your top off. Okay, but on a serious note, though, she says, Now that Stella's gone, who am I meant to live for? I have no purpose. Now, I know I sound like a broken record, but doesn't this girl remind you of Robin? I'm sorry, she reminds me of Robin. Maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe I'm just pushing an agenda and I just don't realize it. But she gives me hardcore Robin vibes, which is why I came up with the theory a long time ago that she'd be the 10 Titanic captain, which was wrong. Thank you, Gota. But I still have that thought process in the back of my mind that just says, Aokiji's not gonna stay there. Aokiji's gonna leave and either nobody replaces him or somebody does and that somebody could be Stussy, which I, I would hope, but it may not actually happen. But let's think about it real quick. I really think Robin is the only character that does not have a clear matchup against the Blackbeard Pirate. And that's why I sit here and I say this and I'm like, yo, these two characters have somewhat of a duality. And also, hey, you gotta think about it, the Blackbeard Pirates are here. We last saw Katarina Devon and Van Auger talking to Garibou. Who's to say they left yet? Who's to say? I'm just saying there may still be time. If Stussy just randomly disappears by the end of the arc, doesn't go with the Straw Hat crew or nothing to sail away to wherever else they're going, I'm going to immediately start speculating that she went with the Blackbeard Pirates. Will I be wrong on this theory? Yeah, probably, more than likely. I was wrong about Carrot. Probably be wrong about this one too. But it would just be so fascinating, don't you think? Stussy versus Robin. I mean, it's a better idea than Aokiji versus Robin. That's for sure. Stussy is a cool character. She's got a lot of potential for certain things. Doesn't have to be the specific things that I say. Just do the character justice. You better not fumble this, Gota. And now we transfer over to the strongest guy in the verse, spanking it to a picture of Vivi's greatest grandmother. Are you serious? Are we really turning this guy into an Obito Darth Vader type Joker? Who else but Gota? Also, one last thing to talk about regarding this chapter, Vegapunk quite literally calls out the Roger Pirates for being a bunch of bumps. Vegapunk says, Roger, the king of the pirates and his crew found out the secret of the world and everything and they didn't tell nobody, which is true. Roger found out the truth of this world, found out that we were all screwed, laughed about it, then died. <laughs> And they were just like, nah, don't tell nobody. Let them have fun. That, my good sir, is absolutely hilarious. Okay, it's not necessarily true in that exact sense, but let's be real. It's funnier when you think of it that way, okay? But overall, even though Vegapunk's message is a little bit too long and Oda could most definitely condense this message in fewer chapters, I still like Egghead Island. To me, Egghead Island is still a contender for one of the best post-time skip arcs in One Piece. Now, better than pre-time skip, because pre-time skip had Saba Odi, Water 7 in his lobby, and Marine Ford. See, that was Oda back in his day. That was prime Oda. Oda today, eh, okay. I mean, it, it, he's still good. He's still good. I mean, hey, the Kuma flashback, one of the best flashbacks in one, actually, it's my favorite flashback in One Piece, to be real. So hopefully Oda can speed up this whole Vegapunk reveal thing that he's got going on, because it is taking entirely too freaking long. Condense this, holy crap. And hey, the Iron Giant, we find out that the transponder Snell is actually in the Iron Giant, which 
Yeah, that was actually a pretty, pretty good story development. I like that. I like that. Maybe this time he can serve more of a purpose other than just being cliffhanger bait for like the seventh time in a row. But anyways, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. Come and join the Vagabond's journey. I still like Egghead Island, it's just that these past five chapters have just overstayed their welcome, that's all. But it's all good. We know some good stuff is coming in the future, so hopefully it's not too long from now. And so, with all that being said... Vagabond gone.